Hey everyone, I'm Nick Meter from Solift Cacao, and I'm here with a special guest today to talk about cacao. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, my name is Anjali uh, Mar, and uh, I'm uh, kind of a, an assistant and, and learning uh, student under the guides of the Sutuhil people and also the um, Quiche people of Guatemala. But I'm a US native um, because I was born here. My father and family are from Guatemala. Mm, wonderful. So how did you start to work with the Suchu Hill people? Um, in 2012, I returned on a journey um, that I felt really called to go back to Guatemala and connect with my roots, um, but alone, not without my family. Um, I had been traveling the U.S. and I felt a little bit lost. Um, playing music and just, you know, wandering. And I, I ended up in Lake Atitlan, where I found myself in a uh, ceremony with uh, some Kiche friends that today are, are considered my spiritual guides that I learned under from uh, Chichi Castanango. And that was my first introduction. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of people around the world are becoming more curious about cacao as a spiritual aid. I'm wondering if you can uh, share some of your perspective on that and, and, and maybe going into a bit of the history as you've seen it come through in that tribe. Yeah, um, so I've been taking it all my life because I thought it was, it was called Chocolate de la Abuelita, Grandmother's Chocolate. And um, I never really connected chocolate to cacao until um, I got older. Um, and even my, my grandmother used to say, this is really good for you, but you know, we would add a lot of sugar. Um, and of course, now that I know the history, um, I think it was a, a, a Scottish queen that took it upon herself and realized that it was making her, when it arrived to Europe, it made her feel really good and she liked it and she saw some benefits to it. And she started to order more of it back in the colonial times, right? So this is something that um, has never gone away. It's just kind of been a secret or it, it got forgotten or it got like, we got separated from the knowledge of why we like chocolate. Um, and then it turned into people giving it to their lovers on Valentine's Day or as gifts because it was special and people just kind of forgot. Um, but there's tons of folk tales about it. and. Um, and I started taking it little by little, but I think that I, I realized as a child taking it, how it did affect me because I was super creative and loved to read and focus. And I was writing and these kind of things, right? So um, since 2012, um, I, I heard about also uh, the psychologist Keith doing his ceremonies and wasn't really interested because I wanted to work with the... the um, the Mayan people and taking it and little by little experimenting in myself, I saw the benefits. Mm. Uh, and then I also saw uh, the proof, which is elder women who are over a hundred years old and they are sharp and healthy wow. and carrying uh, pallets of wood on their head in a mountain. Mm. And of course you ask them, you know, and one of the things that they take and make is cacao. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, it, so anyway, you you did sorry you you did ask me after I came back to the U.S. Little by little in the last years, I've been seeing and meeting more people who say they 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 are um, bringing cacao and using it and you know um, kind of a a new um, how you say a, what's the word for something that's popular a movement uh, or a trend a trend mm -hmm. like a lot of people i know a lot of people reject trends mm. but there's reason you know it's just getting the word is going out but it's not it's not something that's new it's something that's been uh -huh. used forever <laughs> for right. so long yeah it's new in my life it, and i'm extremely grateful to cacao i was dealing with chronic illness for some years and uh, cacao was a big Thing that helped me turn turn my situation around so I feel like you know the work that I do with cacao now is definitely coming from a 
uh, place of service. Uh, and uh, But I'm wondering, is there a right way to work with cacao? Are there certain people, you know, th this is kind of the question that's up in the in the air right now about the possibility of cultural appropriation. How do we how do we work with cacao ethically and responsibly if we're not if we weren't born in one of those cultures? Yeah, I understand. Um, so I wasn't born in that culture. However, it is my blood, my father, mm -hmm. my 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 culture. Um, learning about it and in being invited and, and being shown. I think um, happy to share this information. Um, it gets strange when people aren't aware, and then there's like, you know, this rush, and it's not done with intention. Where things can become monoculture. Mm -hmm. um, the the um, the want for it. I think this is where it's dangerous, is because we don't want that. We don't want exploitation of mm -hmm. a, of a very powerful plant, you know, like, um, like now Palo Santo is endangered, for instance, because oh. so many people want Palo Santo, and then they're not like taking in consideration, um, which I hope we will solve these things. But for instance, I work with a small family. Um, and they don't need a lot, and they don't grow a lot. And this is where the, the plant stays pure, and they don't need to add any pesticides or anything like that to like, grow so much you know so that's the only part that i think appropriation to me bothers me because it's about money mm. and it's about um moving so much mm. <clears throat> but other than that um i i believe that i've received permission and um to do it in a way that is ceremonial to help people with intention because you have learned you have learned right mm -hmm. and when you take it anyway the medicine speaks to you um but there are some people like my older brother who's an artist who takes it and he's like not not spiritual at all and just takes it as a protein to him it is a superfood and he feels like as a nutrition nutrition base it helps him focus on art he takes it for that reason and that's totally okay as well right mm -hmm. so i um I I don't know about cultural appropriation because I feel like when when it is shared and open um anyway I don't know maybe you can elaborate well, actually, my next question well yeah I just I in my journey you know navigating that topic it just seems so complex it seems it seems like most of the conversations I've seen about it uh end up um Sim trying oversimplifying a very very complex global situation and so i've i've done my best to get educated about uh you know even the history of the chocolate industry which i, I didn't realize how much destruction is caused by large chocolate companies sourcing from west africa for instance which where child uh, labor or even slavery could still be happening yeah exactly um like all things right um it's like good to know where it's coming from and that it doesn't it doesn't come from something that you don't believe in and don't want to support yeah but when it comes from a family that makes it in a beautiful way and it's not hurting anyone and you're aware of that then it's like becoming conscious of what you're supporting and mm -hmm. what you're consuming and and that's different but as far as um the ceremony goes i think um I don't know. I mean, how could it be cultural appropriation if chocolate for the last centuries have been taken by everyone? You know, is Halloween and mm -hmm. giving chocolate to kids a cultural appropriation, but it's a U.S. holiday, you know? I, I don't know about that, but I, I do understand where people, and when I was in Germany, people wanted to know. I went to also, um, I did an interview and went to this alternative school of uh, um, alternative healing. Mm -hmm. And they were really, really cautious about uh, taking things that are in appropriation. Um, and that's great that people, you know, just want to make sure that it's okay with the indigenous people, of course, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, it, and that's so complicated that, I, I mean, we can keep going about so many things that you can relate to, you know, like, um, yeah. like is ayahuasca appropriation culture, but they're, 
they're helping people with it and you know and and um it's more like uh let's be logical and let's let's know the facts mm. um but if you want to i think it's different if if someone is um <clears throat> is is totally taking upon the ceremonies without any permission or without actually learning mm. being with them having a relation then maybe maybe i could see why it would bother someone but if you're spreading something that is a nutrition that is good for people that can help people mm. i i do not see absolutely any problem with it you know and mm. um, if you do it in the traditional way which is in a ceremony base which is with intention because to the to a lot of the mayans in its pure form it is a powerful medicine and you can actually take too much you know oh yeah it's, it's, yeah. it's good it's good to know mm -hmm. you've also described to me how cacao might be um you know part of a bigger picture of what's considered sacred even even tea for instance in in that culture is that true uh yes <clears throat> well uh do you mean that tea is considered also sacred or i, I mean um, I mean, yeah, like well, just that there are other... cultural appropriation because to the chinese it's done in mm. a tea set form mm. on the ground and they also have their little ritual of taking tea you know and you take it a certain way but tea i mean does that mean that no one in the world can share uh the the richness and cultures of of what the rest of the world have to offer mm. Mm. you know but cacao is something new and it's something beautiful. And I think that um, when you experience it and share it with knowledge and, and make people aware, like feel it, because in this moment you can experience, have an experience with it mm. and investigate it yourself. Um, I think that that's, that's the special thing, right? Introducing people like, hey, remember chocolate? Well try it in this way and let's do something that's therapeutic or medicine and i think you can have different forms of that and when you make it your own and have your own uh personal ritual um i think i think that that my personal opinion it's it's very beautiful and i have received permission to share this medicine Mm. Um, and, and taught about it very much to to um, to its qualities, right? Uh -huh. And it does seem like some people's concern is whether uh, if the people growing and producing the cacao are being compensated fairly. So, could you share a little bit about how the the arrangement is with the family? Yeah. Yeah, so um, Nick, you just you just ordered some of the cacao from this family, and I've gone to their farm. Um, I've picked, I've seen uh, the beautiful plants and it's just, you know, land that is caretaken by this family and they get the seeds and they do it um, as a, as a, uh, more so for their movement, um, but they need to uh, supply themselves, uh, how you say, um, create abundance and, and, and survive, you know, because unfortunately, you need to buy rice if you want a lot of rice or you need to buy pots or you need to buy gasoline to cook in the store. Otherwise, uh, Guatemala is very rich in, in all of its um, uh, nutrition, mm. but there are things that you need money for. And so through helping people, they were just asked, can you also, like, can I also acquire cacao from you? And, and it just sort of happened for them. Same with me, um, through my connection of speaking English and living in Guatemala, people just started asking me, can you get it for me from these people? Because they practice it in a, in a very special way and with intention and it's pure and it's not coming from a monoculture farm where one um, uh, foreigner owns everything or you know it's not governmental land or some big... Um, a Chiquita banana company that mm. is paying these workers so little money because if you're if people are already worried about that they would they would stop going
going to Starbucks <laughs> or they would, yeah. um, you know, because that's really where big, big companies start to get the most for profit. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, I just, I just, I personally just work with one family mm -hmm. um, and I work with an elder woman. And when, when I'm there, I usually get it from whoever it's available from. Um, the elder woman makes very little, but she's over a hundred years old. So to me, she, I want her medicine and I want her that makes it with her own hands. Mm. Um, and she, she does it with love and she has fun with it. It's part of been her life and her tradition. And the other family, um, it's literally a family grand. I know the grandfather, the grandmother, and I, uh, like to um, basically just keep it going for them so they have some steady income coming and mm. all they do with it is um, is is travel to teach uh, about the Mayan calendar education and th this is what they do with their lives so yeah. the the um, supporting them is supporting something something beautiful mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you've so described it to me as a profit share essentially right Eight, uh, did you say 80 percent Yes. Back. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Basically. So, um, I unfortunately I I have to get twenty percent and we pay someone to go do the trip because uh, from Lake Atitlan it's a little bit complicated the shipment, so we have to make sure that it's worth it for everybody, right? In some way. Sure. Yeah, it takes many hands to to do the good work. Yeah, and and this is not so many hands. It's just from, you know. <laughs> <laughs> takes more yeah. than two hands <laughs> a little bit more than two hands yeah <laughs> well thanks so much for for your time and for sharing all this i really appreciate yeah. it yeah excited i, I love i love this cacao i yeah i love the flavor and the energy of it and i look forward to sharing it with more people yeah i'm very happy about it too and um i hope i hope people can share the experience and mm -hmm. and uh, we call it the the um the mind of the heart right so oh. um what i could recommend for someone who's never ever tried cacao it's if you if you need to focus if you need to get out of your head um that's that's the biggest qualities that i see is mm. you're just healthy and you feel in the moment and you you become one with your body basically mm. the <laughs> so. world the world can use that for sure yeah all right we'll take care all right nick and yeah for everyone else uh follow the information below this video check for the link to learn more about how you can get some of this cacao for yourself yeah this is for the super heal people thank you very much <laughs>